Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1509, Henry VIII, who was fond of killing his wives, is crowned King of England. In 1789, John Adams was sworn in as the first Vice President of the United States, nine days before George Washington's inauguration as President. In 1792, Brazilian revolutionary Tiradentes is hanged and drawn and quartered in Rio de Janeiro. In 1836, General Sam Houston led 800 Texans to victory over a Mexican army of 1,500 in the Battle of San Jacinto. In 1855, the first train crosses the Mississippi River's first bridge from Rock Island, Illinois to Davenport, Iowa. In 1865, Abraham Lincoln's funeral train leaves Washington, D.C. In 1878, First Lady Lucy Hayes begins the traditional egg rolling contest on the White House lawn. Also in 1878, the ship Azor leaves Charleston with 206 black people relocating to Liberia. Also in 1878, New York City installs the first firehouse pole. In 1898, Spain declares war on the U.S. The U.S. responded four days later. In 1904, Ty Cobb makes his pro debut for Augusta in the South Atlantic Baseball League. In 1910, American author and humorist Mark Twain dies today. In 1914, U.S. Marines occupy the Mexican port city of Veracruz and stay for six months. In 1918, legendary German fighter pilot the Red Baron is killed in action today. He had 80 combat victories and died at only 25 years old. In 1925, Noel Coward's Fallen Angels appears in London. In 1926, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom is born. In 1930, a fire at the Ohio State Penitentiary kills 322 people. Also in 1930, All Quiet on the Western Front, starring Louis Wolheim and Lou Ayers, premieres in Los Angeles and receives the Academy Award for Outstanding Production. In 1935, allegedly showing the Loch Ness Monster, the Daily Mail publishes what is called the Surgeon's Photo. You've seen it, and by the way, It is fake. In 1947, American singer-songwriter Iggy Pop is born. In 1952, Secretary's Day, now called Administrative Professionals Day, is first celebrated. In 1956, Heartbreak Hotel, Elvis Presley's first hit record, hits number one. In 1959, British songwriter Robert Smith of The Cure is born. Also in 1959, using a rod and reel, Alf Dean hooks a 2,664-pound, 16-foot, 10-inch great white shark off the coast of Australia. I don't think he was meaning to do that. In 1963, the Beatles meet the Rolling Stones for the first time. In 1965, the New York World's Fair reopens for the second and final season. In 1967, Joseph Stalin's daughter arrives in New York City after defecting to the United States. In 1968, at the 22nd Tony Awards, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern and Hallelujah Baby both win. In 1970, the Principality of Hutt River secedes from Australia. To this day, it remains unrecognized by any other nation, including Australia. In 1972, as part of Apollo 16, John Young and Charles Duke explore the moon today It must have been a thrill. In 1974, at the 28th Tony Awards, River Niger and Raisin win. In 1977, popular musical Annie first opened on Broadway. In 1982, Dr. Michael E. Bakey performs the first successful heart transplant. In 1984, after 37 weeks at the top of the album charts, Michael Jackson's album Thriller is knocked off by the movie soundtrack for Footloose. That seems kind of crazy to me. In 1986, American journalist Geraldo Rivera opened a vault on live TV that was found in the former headquarters of Chicago gangster Al Capone. Contrary to what they hoped, he and an estimated 30 million viewers discovered that it was empty. 
Who has two thumbs and was one of the 30 million viewers? This person. In 1989, future U.S. President George W. Bush and Edward W. Rose become joint CEOs of the Texas Rangers. In 1992, Robert Alton Harris is put to death in the California gas chamber for committing three murders. In 1993, TV series Walker, Texas Ranger, starring Chuck Norris, debuts on CBS. Thank you, Chuck Norris. In 1994, the first discoveries of extrasolar planets are announced by astronomer Alexander Wilson. In 1995, today was the Boston Celtics' final regular season game at Boston Garden. Also in 1995, the FBI arrests Timothy McVeigh and charge him with the Oklahoma City bombing. In 1997, the ashes of Timothy Leary and Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry are launched into space orbit. In 2002, at the 48th British Academy Television Awards, The Sketch Show wins for Best Comedy and Cold Feet wins for Best Drama. In 2003, American singer-songwriter Nina Simone passes away today. In 2004, at the 38th CMT Flameworthy Video Music Awards, Toby Keith, Shania Twain, and Kenny Chesney win. Also in 2004, at the Rock for the Rainforest Benefit concert, performers included, you can probably name them yourself, but there was Sting, Elton John, James Taylor, Billy Joel, Bette Midler, and little Jimmy Scott. I'm sure glad that my wife didn't know Elton was there every time, or I would have had to buy lots of tickets over the years. In 2008, the United States Air Force retires the F-117 Nighthawk. What a cool plane. In 2010, Shrek Forever After, with voices by Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, and Eddie Murphy, premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. In 2013, 185 people are killed in a conflict between Islamic extremists and the Nigerian military. In 2016, American singer-songwriter Prince passes away today. He was only 57 years old. In 2017, the Taliban attack an army base in Afghanistan, killing more than 100 people. In 2019, terror attacks on churches and hotels on Easter Sunday in three Sri Lankan cities kill at least 253 people and injure hundreds more. Also in 2019, Ukrainian comedian Vladimir Zelensky wins the country's presidential election in a landslide. Wow, does he have his hands full now or what? In 2020, according to new mortality figures, at least 25,000 extra people across 11 countries have died during the COVID-19 pandemic that were not previously counted. In 2021, while amassing 100,000 Russian troops on the Ukrainian border, today Russian President Vladimir Putin warns the West not to cross a red line. And lastly, also in 2021, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office announces that they will no longer prosecute prostitution and dismiss 914 open cases. Hey, thanks for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I'll meet you back here tomorrow.